with so many different browns available, I'm thinking it might be helpful to have a little play around with a few different browns and just compare one to another. So I'm going to try some simple mixes with a series of different browns and just see how they behave. So I'm going to start with the Italian brown ochre, a fairly new colour from Michael Harding, and have a look at that compared with transparent oxide red, the new transparent oxide brown, a burnt umber, and Van Dyke Brown, another new colour. And I'm just going to try mixing them with white to begin with so that we can see what happens. So I'm using titanium white which has a blue bias, it's a very cold white. I'm going to put a little pile here and just add some to each of those different browns in turn. So this is the Italian brown ochre which, as you would expect, is more brown than a yellow ochre. And it's making a really lovely, warm, smooth brown, just with some white in it there. The transparent oxide red, as you would expect, is transparent. So adding white will change it quite considerably. So on its own, it's much redder, a much darker value you can see here, much darker value to begin with and it makes a beautiful rust colour with a little bit of white in it. Stronger, more saturated colour than the ochre. This new transparent oxide brown is also transparent obviously <laughs> and we'll try it with some white and see what we get. That's much more of a mid-brown colour, it loses the redness um, but it's got a rich velvety, it's very chocolatey brown, that one looks like milk chocolate. <laughs> Compared with a burnt umber, again a transparent colour. The difference there, the umber's going much more grey when I'm adding white to it. That's a problem I've found in the past. When you try to lighten burnt umber it can go really quite grey. So the difference there is it's quite interesting, that transparent oxide brown is retaining a lot more warmth when I'm adding the white to it. The Van Dyke brown on its own is quite black looking, it's like a warm black. So when we add some white to that we'll see where that goes. Not too much white, just see what we get. Much, much cooler. It's almost like a warm charcoal grey we're getting there. This one seems to be more of an alternative to black. So that's what happens when we add white. I wonder what happens if we add yellow. I'm going to try a transparent yellow because three of these colours are transparent. So let's see what happens if we introduce some Indian yellow. So if I squeeze here some Indian yellow and we'll try it with the Van Dyke brown first. That's gone quite green. That's a rich, deep, fairly transparent looking olive green. Really quite a lovely colour, be very useful for foliage. Into burnt umber, not too much yellow, oh wrong one, into the burnt umber. We'll see what we get there. That's beautiful. That would be great for painting brass or slightly yellowy browns, it's slightly mustard. You can see there, it's retaining that yellow really nicely. Still quite cool. Transparent oxide brown, this could be exciting. Yeah, it's definitely quite a lot richer and warmer than the burnt umber. And then if we try it with transparent oxide red, with Indian yellow. Oh, I've just got a little bit of the white in there unfortunately. But it's gone a really rich rusty brown. The colour of burnt bracken in the autumn. And then if we go into the 
Italian brown ochre. That's lovely. That's a really useful mid-value soft yellow. Darker yellows can be difficult and that's actually worked out really nicely. So there's quite a dramatic difference between these different browns and it's quite interesting to see them used beside one another. When you're trying to select a brown, I often find it quite confusing and I'm not sure where to start and which, which brown is useful for which job. So I hope this is helpful in figuring out which one you want.